Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo BIM. On this episode of Dynamo Shorts, we're going to be placing families. Maybe you want to place conference room furniture in all of your conference rooms, right? So we're going to look at all of our rooms, understand what the room names are, filter them down, and then place families in those locations where the rooms are found. Super easy. We're going to be using the sample file. So we typically do. Let's get started. And the only thing that I have done within the sample file is I have created a few additional furniture plans because there was only one. I turned on a color scheme looking at room name and I loaded in a desk. That's it. Sometimes what's really good is to work backwards within Dynamo to understand what it is that we need to place what's referred to in Revit as family instances. So if I come up here and I look under Revit elements and family instance, you can see that there are a few different ways that I can create or place a family instance. The one that I wanna do is by point and level, as I briefly discussed earlier. So it takes a family type, a point and a level and will place those family instances for us. So we wanna get family type and I just right clicked and searched within my canvas here and we should be able to find that desk that I loaded in and essentially we're going to see all of the family types that have been loaded into our model. I'm going to take family types, the output there and put it to the input of family types and now we need the point and level data from our rooms. So to do that I'm going to come back over here to the left and I'm going to just double click and create a code block so that I can grab the entire category of rooms. I think I spelled that correctly. Now, essentially, I'm using a code block rather than the category drop down because I want to always get the category of rooms, I'm kind of hardwiring it here, if you will. So I'm going to type in category, and you can see there that I can get category by name. And because I have that name typed in correctly, hopefully, you can see that it finds the category of rooms. So at this point, I want to get all elements of category, just like my schedule would, right? So we're gonna look at all rooms within our Revit model. It looks like there are 91 within this specific sample file, the Revit advanced sample file. So, once again, at this point, what I want to do is filter down these rooms based off of their name, right? So if I come over here and I look for name within the search bar here, you can see that there's room name, level name, space name, work set name, family name, etc. So let's see if we tie in our elements to our rooms, if we can get there we go, our room name. You can see here that this is a Revit parameter for room. So if I click on that, it will actually take me to the section in which that area in the library exists in this specific category under Revit, Elements, and Room. And you can see that we can create a room within Revit. We can ask some things about it in addition to its location, which we'll need later, right? But at this point, what we want to do is filter down these elements based off of their room name, right? So what I want to do is ask these elements if they equal a string that I specify. You can see here that this outputs a string, which looking back at previous Dynamo short episodes, we know is just an assemblance of characters right? Uh, could be letters, it could be special characters, or in this case, most of which, which are letters, right? Um, so we want to use the double equal sign so that we can understand if these room names equal what the room name that we want it to. In this case, we're going to use instruction, which you can see is actually the 15th room in addition to the 18th and so on. So we're actually going to use the equal X to Y operator, a uh, little trick here. If you use the one with the tolerance, that's actually looking for mathematical values. This will not work with strings. So we need to just make sure that we're using the equal X to Y 
node here. And I am going to also place a string node. The beautiful thing about a string node is that this can be used within Dynamo Player as an input. So I'm going to create a group of this, create some significance around this string node, and say, specify room name of rooms to get family instance. Copy that and place that into the string as well. And if I right click on this node, on this string node, which may be nice to specify here that it is in fact a string for the users who maybe aren't as familiar with Dynamo. Now I can come in here and I can type in case sensitive, and of course needs to be spelled correctly, instruction. If I right click on this and make it an input, this can be utilized within Dynamo Player as an input. And you can see here that we have 15 and 18, once again, as true, because their room name equals instruction, right? If I do it for something else, like lobby, you can see here that my list updates and we get some different values with some trues and falses. In this case, number one should be true. Right, I'm going to undo that because I do want the instruction rooms. That's where I'm going to go ahead and place those desks. At this point, we're going to do something that's incredibly common within Dynamo. We're going to filter our elements based off of these Boolean values. And what that is referred to is a filter by Boolean mask. So I'm just going to move our family by level and point over, and I'm going to look for filter. And that should be the first node that comes up, our list being our room elements, and our mask being our list of Booleans. So if I come in here and see, you can see that I get two output lists, an in list and an out list. There are 19 rooms within my Revit model that get output within the in output section, which essentially means that they meet the condition. They are reported as true within the mask that I fed into the filter. So essentially, once again, just filtering the room elements based off of a condition. In this scenario, it's by their name. So I can go ahead and now start to work with these 19 rooms. In this case, because I need to place family instances, I need to know their point and, and their level. So once again, looking back at our room data, if I just type in room here, you can see that we get some information with under Revit, room name, room area, number, height, volume, location is what I want here and you can see that that output is a point so I'm going to get my in list to my rooms because those once again are the rooms which met my condition and the point is output there so I will push that out to the family instance input that is also looking for a point now at this point I just need one last input and that is level and working with this I know that I need to look for element dot level one important thing to note here uh, which I will say there's a wonderful add-in under the monocle extension for this but whenever we utilize a custom node we want to ensure that it's annotated so I'm going to do this manually which you can hit control W to get a note you can also go to edit, I believe, create note to get a new note on the canvas. And I'm just going to label this as clockwork so that anybody that opens up this script besides me will know that they need clockwork. Or maybe I open up in a different version of Dynamo that doesn't have clockwork installed yet, right? Very, very important that we always label our custom nodes. So if I look at the output from our in node to our element level, and you will see that it actually reports an element instance. This is incredibly important because this is what this level data needs. If we get the element dot get parameter value by name, 
that actually reports a string, which once again is just characters. That will not work with this particular node. So thanks for Clockwork for providing a node that actually reports the level as an element. <laughs> now at this point, if I run the script, it will place the family instances. So I'm gonna move this over to manual before I wire these together because then it would place all of my families and I kind of want to control that. Minimize that, click run, and you can see we now have 19 desks located at the center of our instruction. So right, if I look here, you can see that room is named instruction and there is a desk that has been placed right in the center of that room location. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned quite a bit about Dynamo. Please leave comments and like if you enjoyed this, if you learned something, and let me know what you'd like to learn next on Dynamo Shorts.